For 11 years, my next guest only invested exclusively in Russia. But in 2007, after Hermitage's offices were raided in Moscow and their documents were seized, its founder and CEO, Bill Browder, turned his investing focus to other emerging markets. He was forced to. He was later blacklisted by the Kremlin and denied entry to the country. Mr. Browder's story has been featured in various international publications, and you can see it on YouTube. He created a video on YouTube. He joins me right now to set the story straight, give us the story, as well as talk to us about the risks and rewards of investing in Russia and around the world. Bill, so nice to have you on the program. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. And since the last time you were here, your lawyer died. Yes. Uh, you say it was murder. Yeah. So I, I came, came on to your program in, um, I believe it was October. And we had put out a YouTube video to try to describe all the fraud and, and malfeasance that the Russian government with the police force had done to us. And they had taken one of my lawyers, a, a young man named Sergei Magnitsky, a 36-year-old lawyer from Moscow. 36 years old, with a family. With kids. a family, two kids, a wife, a mother he looked after, and they stuck him in jail for a year. And when I came on your show, one of the main purposes at that time was to try to highlight his case to get him out of jail. Um, he was real sick in jail. They denied him medical treatment. He developed a very painful uh, 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 stomach ailment called uh, pancreatitis. They refused him medical treatment even though he had requested it on 15 different occasions and he died um, suddenly on the night of November 16th as a young 37-year-old man. He went into jail healthy. An absolute tragedy. That is unbelievable. And you think it is solely to do with the fact that he was defending you on behalf of trying to get back, invested in Russia, trying to get your your documents back. They seized your, your documents and so, raided your offices. Well, let me tell you the story. So what happened was in, um, in June 2007, the police came to our office, um, raided our office and took away our documents. They also raided our law firm's office. And then those documents were used to, to basically fraudulently re-register our companies out of our name into the name of a criminal. So we went out and hired a bunch of lawyers and we hired this young man, Sergei Magnitsky. And when, we started, and when we started to write criminal complaints alleging the police officer's involvement, um, they went and tried to open criminal cases against all of our lawyers. We got a bunch of them out of the country, but Sergei didn't want to leave. He was a patriot. He said, I'm not going to leave. He went and testified against the police officers involved in the theft of our documents and the theft of our companies. Um, and those same police officers then came by his house a month later, arrested him, stuck him in jail. And they said, if you withdraw your testimony and plead guilty against yourself and implicate me, Bill Browder, um, then we'll let you out of jail. He refused. And they kept on making his conditions worse and worse and hoping that they could break him. And, and he absolutely refused to do the dishonorable thing of, plagi of, of um, perjuring himself. And then on November 16th, he died. In his own testimony, he said, the reason that they're putting all this pressure on me is to try to get to, to break me, to try to get me to perjure myself. This is an unbelievable story. I, I want to really get to the heart of it and why it is that the Russians turned on you. Your, your family, his history is, is from Russia. Your mother, right? Grandmother. Your grandmother grew up in Russia? Yeah, she was Russian. She was Russian. And she, she married her husband, who was an American. Yeah, and so they, they came back to America. My grand America... My grandfather was actually became the head of the American Communist Party, which was what draw, drew me to Russia um, after I finished business school. Amazing. He was the head of the Communist Party in, in the U.S. All right, I'm going to get back to what, why they turned on you in a moment, but let me get your take on this for the investors out there who may be considering investing in Russia. According to data compiled by the EPFR Global, perceived lack of law. Uh, the lack of law in Russia is one reason that the country has attracted less than one-fifth the investment in China and Brazil and half of what's invested in India. This is something that you believe to be true, that there is a, no rule of law and that's why you tell people not to invest there. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. When you invest in any country, what you're looking for is property rights. You want to have, you, you want to know if you buy something that's cheap, if all of a sudden the earnings go up, you get to keep it when, when it earns more money. And in Russia, routinely, you have these situations like what happened to us. My story is, is just the tip of the iceberg. There's many, many other stories just like it. And, and to big companies, Shell had the same problem, BP had the okay. same problem, Telenor had the same problem, IKEA had the same problem, IKEA had the same problem. I could go on and on. And so basically, what, 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 what the message that the Russians have sent to the world is that laws don't exist in our country and property is not safe in our country. And so when, when, you, when you point to these numbers, it's the market telling you something. The market is saying that unless they figure out how to 
um, make, make it a lawful country and, and that you're, where your property is safe, people aren't going to put their money there. How much are you, inv- how, how much are you managing right now, Bill? I know so we, have, we have about $1.2 billion. $1.2 billion. Did they take your money that was in Russia? Well, f- fortunately, what happened, well, fortunately or unfortunately, they, they kicked me out of Russia in 2005. They kicked me out because I was complaining about corruption in a lot of the companies we're investing in. So you had become an activist investor. I, I, was, I was the largest investor and the largest shareholder activist in Russia for 10 years. In companies like Gazprom? Prom, the oil company. Exactly. And, and, and I was saying, don't steal money from the companies that I'm investing in. And I said it real loud and I said it very, very concretely and I pointed to examples. And I guess at one point or another, they finally said enough is enough. And so they kicked off. And so they kicked me out of the country. And at the time, I had four and a half billion dollars in Russia. And um, my client said, you know, we don't want to keep our money with you if they kick you out of the country. And so we ended up selling four and a half billion dollars worth of Russian stock in 2006. So fortunately, when they came by our offices to raid our offices to steal all our stuff, we didn't have any money left in the country. But that was their first intention. W- once they stole our companies, they did something which is the most cynical thing I've ever seen, which is they took our companies and then they applied for a tax rebate to get back the taxes that we paid two years earlier. We paid $230 million taxes, and in two days, they got a $230 million tax refund. It wasn't from us. It was yes. from the Russian wow. government. Well, what has the government said about this? What, I mean, you've been very vocal. You did the video on YouTube. You've certainly you've come on this program a number of times. What is the government's response to well, what you're well, saying? Well, the government's response was, was to go after our lawyers when we, when we first publicized the fraud. And once they, they killed Sergei Magnitsky, um, we're now in a very interesting um, uh, place where some of the people, the pres- some of the people, the president himself ordered an investigation into the into the death of Sergei Magnitsky, and it looks like he's on the right side of this thing. But at the same time, you've got a number of other individuals, people in the law enforcement agencies, that are saying who work for Putin. Well, who, who, who worked for Putin or one of his guys or whatever, but these guys in the law enforcement agencies saying nothing happened. He never complained about his health. He died of natural causes. It's nobody's fault. And At 36. At 36. So real quick, where are you investing right now if not in Russia? Well, what we, we've said to ourselves, we want to look for places where there's economic growth and no more of this criminality. And the one thing I can say is that I've, I've visited 27 countries since, since this whole Russian ordeal began to look at other places to invest, and I've never seen anything anywhere near the order of magnitude of corruption that I've seen in Russia. So we're looking at the moment in other emerging markets, but in Asia, we're looking at uh, Indonesia, and Thailand, India, etc. All right, we'll leave it there. We have breaking news right now. Bill, great to have you on the program. We so appreciate it.